Not so fast. Nearly 50 Detroit schools could face closure at the end of the school year, according to a new legal opinion from the state attorney general. It tops our news at 530. This involves a state law mandating closure for schools that perform in the bottom 5% for a period of three years or more. Local force guy Gordon joins us live and it's a, quite a disappointment for district leadership guy. Yeah, they really thought they were getting a reprieve. Now, here's the list of those schools, 47 of them, one third of the lowest performing statewide are from Detroit. And I counted about 22 on that list uh, that have been on it for at least three years and are eligible for closure. Gompers Elementary here in the Brightmore neighborhood is one of them. And as you say, disappointment, yes, because the district and the governor were operating under a different legal review that said this is technically a new district. The clock has restarted and they got three more years. They thought to turn things around. Byron Smith got a call from his son's teacher today. Too much talking in class. His family is new to the school and says he and his son get more attention here closure would mean another difficult move. I mean, for an 11 year old, it probably him being happy where he's at, he would probably be upset. It might make him act out some and it's going to affect us, us in the household. The attorney general says any school on the list from the 2013 through 14 school year onward is subject to closure, saying, quote, Detroit students and parents deserve accountability in high performing schools. If a child can't spell opportunity, they won't have opportunity. But the district's defenders say the now debt-free system deserves a reprieve. Now that we have the fresh start, give the children an opportunity to learn, to achieve, and we see movement, but you can't use this old outdated and flawed data. The governor's office and the district are reviewing Schutte's opinion, could seek other legal remedies or attempt to amend the law. Schools can avoid closure if there's no reasonable alternative location or harmful social impact. Neighborhood leaders here in Brightmoor, well, they say they can make the case it's an unreasonable hardship to them. Because they say if this school closes, it leaves an unfillable void in this neighborhood. Now, there will be no closures again until the end of this school year. And there's another way that schools can get out of the, this uh, dilemma, and that is by performing well. They are going to be using the most recent figures that haven't been tabulated yet for the 2015-2016 school year. Uh, the district says a number of these schools, including Gompers, have improved their performance. They're hoping that they can earn their way off of this list. We're live from Gompers Elementary in the Bryce Brightmore neighborhood. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. And, and Guy, the politics of this are always so very difficult. Now we have the attorney general at odds with the governor. What, what happens next? Well, you, you heard from the state rep there. She says this is all about politics, that the state attorney general is likely going to be running for governor. He wants to curry favor with some West Side lawmakers that are very strong with the charter school lobby. And that's what this is all about. We should point out that the attorney general did this review at the request of the Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader, both of them Republicans who are also a pro charter. A lot of confusion and uncertainty about the future of these schools. And Guy, I know you will keep us posted. We appreciate it.